This video is brought to you by Micro Center Business. Yes, business, it's new. Building an office workstation for yourself might make you a little nervous. Are you bare handling that multiple thousand dollar business class processor about to drop it into your thousand dollar plus motherboard? What, what happens if you break something or do something wrong? Well, you can get the help you need at Micro Center Business from people that have 40 years of experience. They will custom build whatever kind of workstation you're looking for, but at a turnkey sort of uh, process. And that's gonna meet whatever specifications you need. Plus, once it's built, they're gonna continue to offer support and warranty services and everything like that. Now for me, over the years, I've spent thousands of dollars at Micro Center, and they're not paying me to say that. It's been a great source of parts and really good deals and, and good support for me personally, so I like working with them. And now Micro Center is expanding with more business services and more business class computers, servers, workstations, expertise in business class software. You need to run computational fluid dynamic simulations or 64 core monster machines, you know, super micro Dell server stuff, whatever. They've got you covered. And guess what? New customers who visit a micro center location can sign up for a free professional 240 gig SSD. There's details in the link below, but yeah, free SSD, no purchase necessary. I mean, be sure to check that out. So thanks micro center for sponsoring this video. And now on with the show. Oh no, it's an RX 6500 XT AMD apology piece. Ah! Why, why does everybody get so worked up over this? It's just, I don't understand. A lot of the benchmarking on the 6500 XT was fair. And uh, believe it or not, most of the benchmarking that I'm talking about and that I saw is accurate. But I don't think it necessarily paints a complete picture of what's going on with the RX 6500 XT. It's at the low end of the market. And we'll talk about the pricing, but as a successor to the RX 550, it's really not terrible. It's not as terrible as it's been made out to be in some benchmarks. Let's talk about that. <music> There's a lot not to like about this card. It only has two outputs. It doesn't have any hardware encoders. I don't, I, even if it had hardware encoders, it would probably struggle with the PCIe interface. It's only got four lanes for its PCIe interface. It wants PCI Express 4.0. It'll work at PCI Express 3.0, but in a lot of common scenarios, you'll suffer a performance penalty when you run at PCI Express 3.0. So if you are gonna run at PCI Express 3.0, you gotta keep that in mind and you gotta look for that in the benchmarks to see if the benchmark takes into account, okay, was this card running at PCI Express 3.0 or 4.0? Chances are, if you're looking for a graphics card to upgrade your older system, PCI Express 3.0, that's gonna be a consideration, something you're gonna have to think about when you're thinking about this card. A lot of the time for an older system, a used GPU might actually be a better choice than a new GPU. But still, even with all of that, what's up with this GPU? <laughs> this is a desktop GPU, really, that was originally designed, I think, for laptops because it's only got a PCI Express four lane interface. It's pretty unusual. Most of the time graphics cards have an eight or a 16 lane graphics card interface. And so it's also only got four gigs of VRAM. Now the reason it's got four gigs of VRAM is probably to combat miners and to make it a little bit easier to manufacture. You see AMD could still be producing Polaris based cards, which to be sure the RX 480 is a legendary card, not unlike the you know, the 7970 gigahertz edition, also another legendary card from AMD. This is not a legendary card. This is a successor to the RX 550. Now, a couple of benchmarks I saw for things like Far Cry 6 reported the Far, Far Cry 6 was gonna run at like 12 to 15 FPS, but that's not really true. I think that the 12 to 15 FPS is if you have installed the 40 gigabyte texture pack. That's the only way that I could get close to approximating that. On my test setup, if I run with the Ultra Textures, not the Ultra HD Texture Pack, but just regular Ultra from the settings, and I run through the canned benchmark, we're actually doing pretty good. You know, our minimum there is like 38 FPS at Ultra. Medium is much better. Actually hopping in the game and spending some time playing it, you know, side by side, we can see the, the quality settings. I would recommend Medium. In general, I wouldn't recommend this card for the higher end graphic settings and the higher end texture settings. You see, four gigs of VRAM, probably not enough for those really high fidelity uh, things in games. And strangely, older cards do better even though they're also four gig. And it turns out the reason for that is the bus interface. You see, this thing only has four PCIe lanes, whereas those older cards 
typically have 16 PCI Express lanes. Even one generation back, the RX 5500 from AMD, that had eight PCI Express lanes. So it was at an advantage as compared with the uh, RX 6500 XT that we're sort of talking about today. Back to Far Cry 6. Far Cry 6, you can get like 75 FPS if you just go with medium, at least in the canned benchmark. Now the, the, the FPS swing from 75 to like 15 or 16 is pretty significant. And it's a combination of things. It's one, the VRAM limit. And two, if you do hit the VRAM limit, then all of a sudden you're moving textures and data across the bus that doesn't have enough interface. What happens is the IO for things you really need, like drawing stuff, and the IO for moving textures in and out compete with one another. And it's a very detrimental effect because there's not enough bandwidth at PCI Express 3.0. PCI Express 4.0, you double your bandwidth, you have a little bit more room. It's better, but to be sure, this is a low-end graphics card. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at medium, 76 FPS. I don't know about you, but I think 76 FPS at medium is pretty playable on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yeah, you can go high or ultra, but if you're using three, four, five times as much VRAM as you actually have, the performance is going to be terrible. And it is going to be terrible in a different way as compared with previous generations. You can definitely show that an older card is faster than this one, by sort of exploiting that weakness in this card. So the pattern with this card is gonna be the higher you set the graphics fidelity settings, the dramatically worse it's gonna perform. See, in, in days gone by, the difference between medium and, and ultra high with exceptions like Crisis, generally wasn't, you know, 150%, 200%. And moving from about 15 or 20 FPS, which I'm not disputing the accuracy of. That's, that, is, that is probably accurate if you have, you know, the 40 gigabyte texture pack loaded, moving from 15 or 20 FPS to like 50 to 60 FPS, going from Ultra HD 40 gigabyte texture pack to like low settings and PCI Express 3.0, I mean, that's quite a swing. Oh, I almost forgot about Doom Eternal. Uh, Doom Eternal is a really interesting one. It literally will not let you set a setting that will dramatically exceed the VRAM. This is interesting. If you set ultra, it's like you don't have enough VRAM and there's no option. You can set ultra and then dial down the textures so that it'll still let you, but you still have other things on ultra. If you do that, this card's only gonna run at about 31 FPS. And remember, I'm still dialed in to PCI Express 3.0 by four on this system. I mean, it's a nice system, but I'm still running at PCI Express uh, four lanes in generation 3.0. And uh, yeah, 31 FPS on ultra, except for the textures, which it won't let you set. Now, if you just set everything to medium with the medium preset, then it's about 60 FPS. And again, that's sort of a unique situation compared with even prior generation cards. And it's not the VRAM, it's more the PCI Express interface. But Doom Eternal was a pretty good play experience at about 60 FPS with the medium preset, actually playing the game. It is possible as a gamer for you to buy this card and enjoy 1080p 60 FPS gaming in most of the titles that I tested or close to 60 FPS, as long as you're willing to deal with medium and low. And I'm not sure that that was really covered everywhere. Now there's a, there's a lot to be unhappy with, with this product. And there's a lot of other ways that it regresses over prior generation products. Things like the encoder and four gigs of VRAM and the bus interface and stuff that I've mentioned before. But you know, the, the big one of course is price. Like if this was a card that was debuting at hundred dollars and it was more clear that it was a successor to the RX 550, which launched with two gigs of, of VRAM, then I think that there would be probably a lot, a lot less vitriol. Now, on the one hand, you can say that the $200 price is because of the global situation and the supply chain breakdown and a whole bunch of stuff out of AMD's control. On the other hand, you can say that miners will buy literally anything and uh, this is a, a money grab to have better profit margins because the profit margins are there. Wouldn't you rather have it go to you know, AMD as opposed to a scalper or can we flood the market or this is the margin that AMD would have enjoyed had this gone into a laptop and this is a desktop product instead. You know, I don't know. It costs $200 or at least the MSRP is $200. It's selling on Newegg for over $200. I think that's a bit much considering the RX 550 cost $100, you know, five, six years ago. And I think it's a bit much considering that the 
RX 480 six years later is still really good. You know, AMD and some of their initial stuff, they said 47% of people on Steam have a graphics card that's a GTX 1060 or worse in terms of performance. And this is potentially quite a bit better performance than one of those cards, assuming that you fit with NVRAM and you are uh, not running in a situation where a PCI Express 3.0 interface is uh, throttling you too hard. Well, you know, I really would have liked for this card to be even more better at an even more better price point. But if there are other people willing to pay more for the card for the purposes of mining, then it costs what it costs. I mean, based on the first round of feedback, I'm sure that AMD probably thinks mm, these probably would have been better just keeping them in laptops and not bothering to try to create a desktop card around this product. I can't even say with confidence whether or not you can buy it at actual MSRP prices. I don't know. I get this quarter. This quarter's from 1962. The silver content in this quarter is worth more than the quarter itself. In 1962, this quarter would buy a little bit less than a gallon of gasoline, meaning the gallon of gasoline in a quarter is close, like 25, 30 cents, depending on where you were in the country. You know, 35 cents, something like that. Gallon of gas, 1962, when this quarter was minted. Um, today, if I melt this quarter down, which you shouldn't do that, for its silver content, then it's also still worth about a gallon of gas. Actually, a gallon of gas is a little bit less than a the silver that's in the quarter, but you know, overhead selling it, converting it, you know, converting the one fungible token into bullion and then into, you know, other, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird situation. I don't know if the pricing is entirely inflation or if it is entirely profit driven or if it's driven by wanting a cut of the, the market. The choice for four gigs is probably driven by trying to build something for gamers and to lower their production costs. So at least maybe there could be price cuts in the future. I don't know, that's just conjecture. I'm just telling you that with this card, if you're willing to play at medium low 1080p, a lot of the games that are out right now will have reasonable performance. But this is definitely not a six year card like the RX 480, uh, which also cost $200 six years ago. So that's all, that's it, that's all I'm saying saying that Far Cry 6 runs at 15 or 20 FPS, which is not technically inaccurate, doesn't really tell the whole story of this card. I'm this level one, I'm signing out, and you can direct your vitriol below or to the level one forums. I don't know. I'm signing out, I'll see you there.